Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Currency of Anarchy. I'm Josh Davis. I'm Tommy Shane. And uh, if you'd like to be a part of the discussion uh, during our live tapings, please check us out at youtube.com slash user slash cur of anarchy. And this is on Mondays at 9 p.m., 6 p.m. Pacific. And you can check out our final products on the air at youtube.com slash user slash voluntary virtues on Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. And yeah, the, the website I keep on forgetting to mention is voluntaryvirtues.com. So please check the whole up network out and like and subscribe and to both channels. That'd be wonderful. Uh, yeah, the first thing that we want to talk about today is um, how one goes through stages to break the, the state in their mind. Uh, they go from a statist perspective, pure statist, and on all the way to anarchy. Uh, it just takes a while. And then some people actually revert back. I remember this, too. But um, I'm just... I, I think Thomas and I want to focus on how people go through stages to anarchism. And I, for example, I guess I might as well talk about my story to start us off. Um, my story is, um, I guess I never was really politically aware. I, I guess this is, uh, this is kind of like you, Thomas. I wasn't politically aware until actually I got out of college and um, I uh, started checking out the political landscape, and I, I guess I always, in the back of my mind, thought I was a Democrat or something like that, a liberal. But then, um, as I actually looked at the issues themselves, uh, I kind of flip-flopped between Republican and Democrat. And it, that's the way they like it. You know, they want you to be in that box of two parties, Republican or Democrat. And um, eventually... Uh, there was something that kind of sparked. It was there was an event. And I I talk about this often enough. Maybe it's kind of a broken record, but um, I uh, the in 2008, McCain and Obama were um, you know uh, going for president, and uh, they told the whole country that they wouldn't vote for the bailouts, and they both did. Like hours later, after that whole. Spiel, and I um, basically that kind of broke the state in a way. It kind of you know set me off, and uh, so I found Ron Paul, Minarchy, that whole thing, uh, you know the Libertarian Party, and uh, as I really uh, eventually Ron Paul just didn't win, and that kind of helped me along, and I found Stefan Molyneux and people like that, and. So this uh, eventually got into the back of my head, and uh, yeah, I, I became an anarchist. I mean, there's not much more for me to say beyond that. Uh, that's what I am. Uh, I guess I always was. Uh, I guess I was always taught these values when I was a kid. You know, don't hurt, don't uh, don't punch, don't steal, don't lie, and you know, it, it kind of goes along with no government. And I think I actually, when I was a kid, I did believe in anarchy because of that. But then, you know, you, you're sucked in and you're like, oh, we need a state because. And it just uh, sucked me in up until after college, you know. But that's my story. Uh, what's your story, Thomas? My story? Um Yeah. Kind of, kind of the same as yours, I guess, with a little diff, a little bit of diff, different parts in there. I, uh, um, yeah, I wasn't politically aware for for quite a while. I mean, when I was a teenager, I listened to like a lot of uh, punk music and that sort of thing, and so I always kind of had that, uh, uh, you know, anti-authoritarian view that I just kind of harbored deep down inside, like for just not just my parents, but for, uh, you know, school officials and police and just anybody who was trying to tell me what to do. I thought, I just knew it was wrong, and I didn't, I just, I guess I just didn't, it took me a while to realize why. Uh, and then I became politically aware, and I was kind of like a liberal or, Demo I don't even, I wasn't even really like a liberal or a Democrat. I just held really vague 
left leftist beliefs. Uh, I knew that I didn't. I I always knew that I just I something didn't seem right with me with with people telling other people what to do and how to live their lives when it wasn't really causing any harm to them themselves. Okay. Um, and so then I don't remember what I I was I was never even in like I didn't even go through a Ron Paul phase or anything like that. Uh, I appreciate Ron Paul now. Like I appreciate a lot of his ideas and stuff. I did. I still disagree with the position of politician, but. Right. Um, anyway, yeah, I just um, I voted twice. I think I voted Democrat once, and then the last time I voted, I voted uh, Libertarian. I voted for Gary Johnson, and then I vowed that that was the last time I was ever going to vote because um, I, I didn't want. I, I guess it just I don't know. It's really hard. It's one of those things that's really hard to explain. You don't. It wasn't like a step by step thing I had going on where I had an analysis of every sequence. It just one day I was just like, you know, I mean, I, I guess a big contributing factor to it was was discovering people like Stefan Molyneux and Kokesh and uh, like Michael Shanklin and stuff, and they were just saying these things, and I was like, you know, this is exactly this makes so much sense to me, and this is this is the kind of thing that I've been feeling all along. I just couldn't put it. I could never put it into words before. So that's my story, I guess. It's just the realization yeah. that, that you don't need the realization that it is immoral for one man to try to control another man and, and the realization that you don't need government to uphold morality or to have a functioning society and be a good and decent person, you know. I think it's uh, funny. I actually started believing in minarchy, and, but... I noticed that if I were to vote, it would be, um, it, I, I don't know, I never voted is what I'm getting at, I guess. I actually never voted. I mean, I supported Ron Paul, uh, and I went to some uh, events or protests, uh, actually just a couple, uh, but that's, that's really it, um, because I was just doing the show. And that's that's as far as it really went for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's true though. It's uh, it's just I don't know. You can't uphold morality with uh, an illegitimate creature that uh, you know. It just says that it is moral. It, it, I mean, but it's going against. Everything that um, that we believe in, really, if that makes any sense, uh, it is violent. It is corrupt. It, it, all of these things, and it's inefficient. Um, so we, in that sense, we can't have a government. But um, that I guess that's all I got. I mean, there there are certain. I did have a Ron Paul phase, or I did have a minarchist phase. I didn't just jump from uh, statism to anarchism. You know, it, it was a a long process for me. Really? Yeah, it was. Uh, it took me six years, really. Uh, it, about, you know. Um, yeah, I graduated in 2007. Uh, oh, yeah, so... Yeah, that's when I became politically aware, in a sense. And in 2008, I started this show, uh, Currency of Democracy. And then, uh, so 2008 through now, so that's about six years. Yeah, it's a long time. That's serious. Yeah. I guess I just, I have I always liked and I believed in the, the idea of anarchism, I guess, just when I was younger. It was just for different reasons. It was just, I didn't want people telling me what to do. And now that I, that I, you know, that I'm educated on it, I, I see, you know, that it wasn't just a naive view that I held. Or a, a lot of people try to dismiss it as just, uh, teenagers being, you know, full of angst and just not, and you know, not wanting to have a curfew and have to do his homework and eat his vegetables and stuff. And no, it's just the idea that human beings shouldn't be controlling other human beings. It doesn't. I, I'm a parent myself, so obviously, I have a 19-month-old daughter, so obviously, you know, I have to 
discipline, not discipline, like, not corporal punishment or anything, but, like, <laughs> discipline, discipline her when she does things wrong and be stern with her, but when she reaches that age where she's starting to want to make her own decisions and stuff, I'm not going to just try to smash it out and, like, you know, no, you don't think for yourself. You do what I tell you, like a lot of parents try to do, like my parents try to do to me. But mm -hmm. So there's a fine line between, you know, guiding them and making sure they don't do something stupid or end up hurt or dead or in jail or something and still letting them be free and be their own person. And that's what it really all comes down to for me is being your own person, being, being an individual. Like I'm an anarchist, but first and foremost, I'm an individualist. So that's why I don't... That's why I'm not into like libertarian socialism and communist anarchism and the tribalism and all that stuff and the Occupy movement and stuff because I'm about being I'm about the individual and, and being my own person. Yeah, uh, there are there are good and bad to the Occupy. There is good and ba bad to tribalism or all that, but um, I, I just think. Yeah, in the end, it is about the individual. You're absolutely right. It's like, um, it it's kind of like, uh, we were going over this at one point. Um, communism uh, is uh, incompatible with anarchy or anarchism, mm -hmm. uh, and, and tribalism. I mean, it would be no government, but. Uh, in the end, it's still it's a lot like a dictatorship, and uh, so there is no individuality when you have that. So, it, yeah, they don't work out. Uh, right. That's all I got for that. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I like I like this topic. This is a good, you know, isn't this what we were talking about at the end of the last show about how? You became. See, this would have been a good show to have a guest on because we would have had a third story. <laughs> third person the next. Um, maybe we can do another thing, another show like this in the future, and have somebody on. But yeah, that's just re that's really like I said, that's really what it all comes down to for me is the the individual being an individual. I don't. I have to say, I don't. I don't necessarily agree that communism is in, is not compatible with anarchy. Just. Not it's not compatible with individualist anarchists. There are a lot of collectivist anarchists, and that's honestly fine as long as they're doing so voluntarily, uh, and everyone is free to leave. It's not it's not one social st communist structure. It's like there's a commune over here, but then here you can go over here, and there's a and there's a free market, and you can, you know. So I guess right, but, but I I still don't agree with that. Uh, I don't know. It's only because the the individual is stomped out and they're not going to have free will it's I mean you say as long as they're uh, free to move about you know t from one commune to another or to pure anarchism or whatever I, I don't I don't buy that I, I think it will take time to actually get to that level though I mean even if we did have an anarchy uh, it would take a long time to get to pure pure. Oh, yeah. Individual anarchy, you know what I mean. Yeah. But in any case, yeah. We can just do our best to try to live individual anarchy in our minds and in our day-to-day -day lives, and just conduct yourself as an individual. But you know, still looking out for those around you, just not, not in a collectivist or authoritarian or statist kind of way, where you think that you need to pass laws to help protect people from themselves. And I think that's a huge that's a huge turning point. I think for a lot of people that go from government to uh, become anarchists or libertarians is they they truly realize that they've been they've become detached from thinking that theft and murder and violence are not are they're not okay, but they detach themselves from seeing theft, violence, and murder carried out by the state as the same thing as theft, violence, and murder carried out by a criminal or an individual. They kind of get, they kind of develop a double standard for the two. And, and, they're, and they allow governments to do much more inexcusable things and get away with it than an individual. And I think a big point, a big turning point for a lot of people is realizing that double standard 
and that realizing that it's not that theft, murder, and violence are, are not okay, and it doesn't matter if it's an individual doing it or a group of individuals doing it or an imaginary entity called government doing it. It's all the same, and it's all it's all immoral and it's wrong. And I know the whole moral moral morality is subjective thing, but I mean I think most people can probably agree that that's wrong, no matter who's doing it. So people just realizing that. You know, by you wanting wanting to pass laws uh, restricting other people's behaviors, that's what you're advocating for: is theft, violence, and murder of innocent and harmless people because they because you think they need to be protected from themselves, or they need to be regulated for the good of society, for the betterment of society, and that's you know that's a, that's a really maybe the main thing of anarchy that's kind of like goes in hand with the non-aggression principle just not you know not initiating aggression on another and that and got you know advocating for government and for legislation is just kind of an act of initiating aggression on another individual so once they realize that and they get rid of that double standard and they start holding everyone to the same moral you know accountability i think that's when you get you know, that's when doors start opening up in people's minds for, you know, libertarianism and anarchism and voluntarism, and it's all different words, but we all believe the same stuff, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. let me ask you a question. Uh, how do we um, put across that anarchism isn't meant to be about chaos and not meant to be about you know, violence, it's actually supposed to be about more moral, a more moral society or whatever. Uh, it's, it's actually, uh, the problem is people associate anarchy with violence. I mean, the greatest example of this, in my mind, is this movie that's coming out about the purge. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, you know, I don't know if they're mocking anarchism or Probably if they're... Yeah. I'm sorry. It's propaganda. Yeah, yeah. It's it's got to be at least that, and I think that you know the these people that actually believe that anarchism is supposed to be about oh morality is out the window. Well, no. You know how would we develop to anarchism with uh, the market? Like how could the market you know supply law? You know, and because it's exactly what we want, and the market supplies what we want. You know, as opposed to feeding our fears. Yeah, and that's where I'm coming from because I think uh, people believe too much in you know this propaganda. Right. Um, you know, if we didn't have a government, then you know we wouldn't have law. We wouldn't have um, people pinned down and. Uh, you know, people would do what they want, and I'll tell you what I want. I don't. I want to be protected as opposed to actually being violent. I'm probably the most nonviolent person as long as I know, because I don't own a gun, but yet I'm an anarchist. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't own a gun? I don't. I I have a knife. Yeah. <laughs> a big knife. Uh, it's a knife. It's not a big knife. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking about getting like a stun, like a stun gun or like bear bear mace or something like that. But I don't have a gun right now for legal purposes. Right. I'm not allowed to have one. But um, whatever. But well, what does that matter, right? I, a lot of people aren't my, allowed. My question. Getting back to the question, though, the question was, how do we make sure people know? Uh, that anarchism is more moral than having a state because the state makes oh, things worse. Um, I honestly think just through repetition, through the same way that you and I made it down this path to where we are now, just by repetition and just by education, educating people and the spreading of information. Anarchy has been given this stigma for so long now that it's that it's entire that it's you know kids and teenagers and just bad people who just want to cause trouble and destroy things and bring down civilization we just have to keep showing them you know in your day-to-day -day life and your actions and in your words that that's not what it is and be a positive representation of you know self-ownership 
and teach people the concept of self-ownership and empower people uh, as individuals to make their own decisions, be accountable for their own actions, and you know, look out for each other without compromising your own self-interest. So, yeah, I think the same way that things get negative, negative associations, that's the same way they get positive associations, just in the reverse, just through action and demonstration. Right. Yeah, because, uh, what was it, Hitler, you know, uh, repeat a lie over and over again and it'll turn into the truth or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have to bring it back. Yeah, bring back yeah. the truth. Yeah. yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think... I was going over this idea with uh, someone I'm close with, and I think that this show is more suited to people uh, getting into anarchism because this is more like a, you know, it seems like a, a 101 type of show as opposed to very specific subjects. You know, yeah. we're we're kind of hitting multiple topics. We're kind of, uh, I, I, I guess that's exactly um, what I was trying to do with my other show as well. It, it's, you know, very basic, you know, get to the point, you know, let's spread the word, you know, spread the message type of thing. Uh, do you agree with that, Thomas? Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I thought that same thing that we're, we, we don't cover, uh, we don't talk about very, very specific um, topics for you know two hours straight. We talk about we talk about um, concepts and you know yeah we do. I think it's it would be a good sh this would be a good show for someone who is just getting into anarchy to at least check out. I'm not I'm not trying to put us up on pedestals and say that we're professors of anarchism or anything like that. <laughs> but no, we talk about a lot of co you know very basic concepts and principles within the movement within the ideology. Um, that are the, you know, they're they're basic and they're simple, but they're the foundations of what make up the idea. So you have to start with a solid foundation. So yeah, I, I would agree with that. We talk about a lot of important things that are important concepts to the movement. I agree, and uh, I think we should spread the word in that sense. Um, actually, I think I caught you in uh, uh, kind of a. Anyway, uh, you said that this is an ideology. I believe that this is actually just pure philosophy in that um, ideologies seem to be political, and we're not political. This is more uh, just down to earth, no politics, no government. It's absolutely not ideologic. Yeah, uh, I just want to make that clear because... Um, you know, when people, you know, profess an ideology, that means they're actually... Uh, initiating force or wish to initiate the use of force and we don't want to do that that's exactly what we don't want to do we just want to educate and we want to drive the point home uh, anyway so this is more philosophical let's let's that's exactly what I've always wanted to do is talk philosophy and talk uh, individualism uh, oh yeah so that's the other part of this whole topic tonight is um, not just the stages of liberty or how you learn liberty or anarchism, mm -hmm. but what are the risks or the fears of being an anarchist or a libertarian in general, or uh, is there any stigma attached? And I think that there absolutely is because people are propagandized to believe that anarchism is chaos or anarchy is chaos and I guess in a pure sense when a state uh, falls apart without the population being educated it's usually chaotic right after that but if anarchism is allowed to go on too long then people will not want to build up a state again because they know what the state creates and they know that anarchism is just people exchanging goods and services really or you know there's a uh, an economy within the family as well but I think that 
when the state is allowed to be absent for too long, then anarchism takes place, or could take place. I guess we don't have any pure example of that. Um, but because the state makes you believe these things, it, it's a belief, it's an ideology, that um, anarchy is chaos and anarchy is terrible, it's not what you want. Well, that's not true, but that's where the stigma comes in. Uh, any anarchist is frowned upon and shunned. Uh, maybe. I guess it's a maybe, because I, I guess I've never actually been shunned outright. Um, uh I guess I've been laughed at a couple times, but that was when I was a minarchist. When I've been an anarchist, they've taken me more seriously because they knew they know who I am. I'm a, you know, honest person. I'm, you know, just your average guy. You know, uh, so I guess I've never actually experienced that per se. They, you know, they actually do attack the idea as opposed to the person. Yeah. Who who laughed at you though about the minarchist thing? Was it? Was oh, it you like know, people on the street. People on the street, you know, I'm I'm trying to, you know, spread the idea of the show and all that. And, and they were, uh, what were they saying? Minarchy will never work. You need. <laughs> they're they like Ron I Paul, ha ha ha. You know, all that kind of crap. <laughs> oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, How could you? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, <laughs> whatever. Well, it's happening now, right? So they it do is. It's becoming yeah. big. I mean, we've got a whole network of, you know, voluntary virtues here, and it's yeah. all voluntarism. It's wonderful. Um, so what So what are we talking about then? Like, the, the just the downfalls of, the, uh, you know, why people are afraid to come out as anarchists and... Yeah, risks, uh, risks or fears or... Uh, how, what was your experience, maybe? I I personally haven't really had any ex negative experiences with being an anarchist. Usually, when I tell people that I'm an anarchist, they I don't know, at least the people I've told about it or informed about it have either said you know like yeah I kind of I pretty much feel the same way after I tell them a little bit about it or they uh, they don't I've never really had anybody like try to call me out or anything on it on the right. internet yeah not not in real life right uh, but I mean I guess I would just um, I know a lot of people do um, reconsider calling themselves an anarchist or telling people about it because they're afraid that they'll be mocked or they won't be taken seriously or um, just any negative effect from the bad stigmas that are associated with it and just all the all the public misperceptions about it about what anarchy really is and um, just a lot of it is just ignorance to it. It's it's the same thing as like any religion or any anything that is not quite the mainstream that people don't all, un they don't really understand they're gonna, um, they just kinda, people have a tendency to mock what they don't understand, they're afraid of what they don't understand, they are angered by what they don't understand, it just all comes down to I think just human ignorance and I don't, I don't I really don't mean that in a in a derogatory or mean or judgmental way. It's just human ignorance. I was ignorant to it at one point, too, and it's just, that's where... As in lack of knowledge. Yeah. As in not, lack of knowledge, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. not being afraid to be who you are and tell people who you are and talk about your beliefs and stand up for your beliefs and not, not feel like you have to hide who you are or how you feel based on who you're you happen to be around because you don't want to swim upstream you don't want to rock the boat you don't you don't want to be like that guy in the uh in the, there's a fam I can't remember the name of it but there's a famous psychology um experiment that people have done that uh is in a I read about it in a a book I have called the social animal it's just about human psychology and how we really are social animals but it's um so it's an experiment where they ask so they're in a college, they're in a classroom, uh, and the teacher is giving a lecture, and say there's 30 kids in the class, 29 of them have been, they've, they're in on it, it's a, it's a joke, they're in on it, they've been told to intentionally give the wrong answer on something, then you bring the one guy in who's not in on it, who actually figures out the right answer to the question, and he has the right answer, 
but since everyone else in the class is not saying that answer, they're all going along with something else. Even though he knows it's wrong, he'll go along with it because nobody wants to be nobody wants to be the one guy to stand up and say, "Hey, wait a minute," you know, because you're, there's that fear of rejection, that fear that you'll be laughed out of the building or that you'll be murdered on the spot or whatever it is you're you're protesting and you're trying to walk out on. And that's a, that's a that's why things like the Holocaust happen, and that's why people become enslaved by governments and by uh, ineffective and just corrupt legal systems because nobody wants to be that guy who, you know, there has to be one. There has to be the one guy who stands up and says, you know what, part of my language says, fuck this, like, this isn't right. Uh, and I feel like, in a way, that's what we're doing. We're being that guy. We're standing up in a society of people who think it's either Democrat or Republican, those are your two choices, or move to Somalia. Um, <laughs> we are putting ourselves out there and standing up and saying, that, look, this isn't right. Like, this is how, you know, self-ownership, non-aggression, that sort of thing. And uh, we just have to keep doing what we're doing. And everybody, that's why I appreciate everybody, every, like, anarchist and libertarian that I meet. I just appreciate them in such a special way because... We're on this. We're both working towards something, and we're both being that guy who's standing up and saying, "This isn't right, and I'm not going to stand for this, and I'm not going to let this happen in my name." There's a better way. Uh, so they're just all. Every, each and every one of them out there is just very important to just the individual in human life, in my opinion. And I think all we can do is just keep doing this and keep. Keep holding demonstrations and keep putting yourself out there and don't be afraid to be who you are and don't be afraid to stand up and go against the crowd. Uh, and sooner or later, hopefully enough, people will come around where it won't be so difficult anymore to get people on board. Yeah, um, I want to backtrack just a little bit. Um, no backtrack. We talking... <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, let me uh, talk about, um, you know, so I'm... I'm currently still looking for you know a software job uh, I've been uh, I've been actually actively looking for the last probably four or five months right and you know uh, my Facebook feed is you know full of you know Liberty you know um, I even put down you know hey my what I call my daily doses of Liberty even though I don't do it daily anymore but um, you know I've been told by uh, some people that maybe the reason why I'm not getting a job is because they're seeing this stuff on my Facebook and I'm like well I don't care you know that I guess that's where the stigma might come in but I'm yeah. like if they're going to respect who I am then you know if you're gonna see my Facebook you at least you know I'm telling the truth or at least what my version of the truth you know what I mean yeah so I believe that I'm doing the right thing whether uh, you know, people like it or not, you know, and actually also talking about that math problem or that psychology test you're talking yeah. about, um, yeah. I guess something similar happened in my uh, college experience. I was in this uh, math class called Discrete Math, and uh, the idea is, um, you know, random or extraneous math topics like uh, sets and uh, uh, factorials and uh, imaginary numbers, they're just random stuff and one of the things is uh, sets or infinite sets, right? And I had this, um, I had a problem with one of the proofs by my professor not just him, though. It, I mean, it's widely accepted by, you know, mathematicians everywhere. But I had a problem with it, and I still couldn't conceive of the problem, or I, I couldn't conceive of their answer being correct. And um, so I, I spoke up, and I kept on speaking up for like a week on end, and everybody was just like, shut up, shut up. And I, I couldn't. I couldn't shut up because I didn't get it. So uh, I guess... In a sense, that's, you know, just to relate to what you're saying. You know, some people do speak up. You know, even if, uh, you know, others just want them to shut up, you know. I, I'm yeah. not one of those people, especially in mathematics. I mean, math I love, so. 
Anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, while we have a break, uh, you know, and we can uh, take a moment, uh, I just want to go over uh, the currency prices and, you know, silver, gold, and Bitcoin as usual. But I, I want to make a correction to last episode. Uh, silver was transposed in the graphic last episode, even though I stated it correctly. In the last episode, the graphic stated that on the 9th, silver was at $19.67, and on the day of taping, the 16th, it was $19.04. Uh, Those numbers were actually transposed, so silver was actually $19.04 on the 9th and $19.67 on the 16th. Also, I stated that Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin was incorrect but I had it right on the graphic so Bitcoin was actually around six hundred seventy dollars on the ninth and five hundred eighty five on the day of taping the sixteenth now as for today's numbers compared to last episodes actual numbers which I just corrected uh, and these numbers were found at eight uh, eight fifty p.m. tonight June twenty third so uh, silver uh, last episode was nineteen dollars sixty seven cents as I just stated and it is twenty dollars eighty three cents tonight uh, so that's about uh, a little more than a dollar uh, change so that's uh, that's all set gold uh, last episode was twelve seventy two seventy three tonight it is thirteen fourteen ninety seven that's about a forty dollar gain and Bitcoin was around five hundred eighty-five dollars uh, last time, and tonight it is five hundred eighty-three thirty-three. And I got that price, by the way, at CoinDesk.com/price. And I usually get my silver and gold prices from twenty-four H, uh, twenty-four H-gold.com, by the way. And I've been doing that for years. So, anyway, enough of that. So now that we're corrected and now that uh, we have all of that in the bag, let's talk about something else. Anything on your mind tonight, Thomas? Anything on my mind? Yeah. Um, no, other than I thought that, that thing about you talking about how maybe that's why you're not getting any callbacks on your jobs because of the stuff on your Facebook news feed. I thought that was pretty crazy. Like, why would they... <laughs> It's, I guess I shouldn't be surprised by it because there are so many statists and we were just talking about all the negative associations with anarchy, but um, right. like just as a business, if, if as a business owner, I would really, like I would prefer those people to work for me because I know that they probably have a high moral character and they're going to, you know, stand up for what's right and they're not going to let themselves or anybody else be walked on or, or manipulated or anything like that um, that's just weird though but like people have said uh, like said the same things about me I, I have a job I've been working in this grocery store for a couple of years now like I have my own department and stuff and uh, I have uh, like a, a considerable amount of tattoos and people ask me you know what are you gonna do like if they if you ever if something ever happens with them and what if nobody's gonna want to hire you and it's like you know just based on personal appearance or or your or if you're because you believe in anarchy you believe in personal freedom or you're you're against the mainstream media or, or anything like that anything that you're not just your average you know whatever you're just your average Joe somebody's not if somebody's gonna not want to hire you or associate with you because of that would you really want to be associated with that kind of person anyway? Would you really want to work for that kind of person anyway who is going to make judgments about people based on stuff like that? That's what I always say. So I'm on the same board with you. Like I don't uh, I don't really hide I don't hide who I am at work for professional reasons because one, I know that everybody that my bosses are, you know, open and understanding to who I am. Uh, and two, because that's just, you know, if you feel you're doing the right thing and you're not doing anything wrong, why should you have to hide? Why should you have to wear a mask or pretend to be something you're not? I think right. that's, a real, that's a really big problem in our society is people wearing masks and pretending to be someone that they're not instead of just right. being who they are and being an individual and being free. And that's my main cause. That's my main dedication is to be a free individual and to empower other people to do the same. 
So. Yeah, like um, if people are telling them what to do, you know, uh, this is how a status might think, I think. If they're telling them what to wear or what to uh, put on their body, then they have the moral right to tell others what to do. And I think that's the dynamic going on, and that's why they're in a cage, because they feel like they can cage others as well. How nice is that? Yeah. So, uh, also, point, uh, another point, I think, is uh, I saw a statistic where uh, people over the age of 18, 90% of those people uh, have a tattoo. But you wouldn't know it because it's under, you know, it's under clothing. So, you know, because they want to fit into society still, even though that's exactly what they're doing. They're fitting it into society because, you know, they have tattoos. Ooh, it's the cool thing. You know, I don't yeah. have any tattoos just because I don't want to mutilate my body. That's my own thing. But, you know, I, at the same time, I'm not going to tell. You know, I want to hire people that ha have tattoos because they're individuals generally. You know, theoretically. Yeah. Even yeah. though it can be a little conformist, you know, if you're a teenager, you might conform and want to have a tattoo because, you know, they're under their parents' roof, that kind of thing. That I guess that's where I'm coming from. At the same time, I I just don't care to have a tattoo. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I I drink, you know, and I have that on my Facebook. Is that a bad thing too? You know what I mean? No. I don't know. It, it's about just, yourself. It's just like people want to control others. It's really freaking annoying. <laughs> yeah. It all comes down to are you hurting anyone but yourself? If not, no one should give a shit. Right. It shouldn't be reflected upon who you are as a person. What should be reflected upon you as a person is your moral character, your 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 moral compass, you know, how you conduct your your behavior, your treatment of others, basically. Yeah. Um I don't know. You could say the nonconformist thing. You could say the conformist thing about almost anybody, though. I mean, technically, That's true. by technically by, by like being involved in the anarchist movement, you're conforming to a certain, you know, yeah. set of beliefs or ideology or philosophy or anything like that. And uh, yeah, um, yeah. So I yeah, that's just it all comes down to me. I don't like I said. I I have. You know, I have tattoos on my hands, my fingers, my neck, everything. Like, I can't hide them, and I don't want to because I don't have any need to. Because if you can't accept me and who I am and my my body and my mind and my thoughts and my philosophy, then I don't care to, you know, have you in my life anyway. So it doesn't matter to me. I guess it's just, yeah. Know, people might it's, call that crazy or reckless or something, but I, I don't. I don't want people around. I don't want to be associated with people who need to see only a certain, a certain uh, idea of me, you know, or a certain idea of what a man ought to be or what an employee ought to be or something like that. I feel good about myself and the choices that I make and my treatment of others, and that's all that matters to me. Yeah, uh, two points. A, it's your skin. You do what you will. But B there is still that factor of the reputation because there is, uh, you know, we're, say we did have anarchism, right? Mm -hmm. The reputation, reputation means everything in the market. Uh, so, you know, if others perceive you one way, uh, that's prejudgment. That's prejudgment and that's, you don't want to work with them. You, you don't want to have business with them at all. But if you start exchanging goods and services, as long as that relationship uh, thrives, then your rep reputation goes up, and that's all that matters, you know, so I think, when it comes to economics at least, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, the way you look, it's it's the way you act, it's, the, it's what you do, uh, actions speak louder than words, I mean, whatever, uh, your appearance shouldn't mean everything, you know. No, I, don't know. I, mean, I want. I want to one day. I want to one day own. I want to operate my own business. I want to start, own, and operate my own business yeah. with, at least, with at least a couple of uh, employees. And those employees, I want to have. I feel like I would do. I first of all, I would probably do working interviews because when you just have somebody come in for a job interview, 
they're it's like it's like politicians do and the president does running for you know running for election. They're gonna say whatever they have to say to get their foot in the door, and then it's all downhill from there. I would probably do working interviews, and I wouldn't care about what they look like or their if they made if they were charged with criminal charges in the past or they made mistakes or they had substance abuse problems or anything like that. All I would care about is I want you to work alongside me. I want to get to know you. I want to know that you're you know a hard worker and that you have integrity and that you have moral character. And that's all that would matter to me. I guess my question is, if uh, they did have criminal charges in the past, then that reputation does kind of stick with them. So yeah. uh, that moral character may not have come about, you know, because uh, it is who they are. Now, if uh, they're able to rectify the situation or whatever, then that's great. But mm -hmm. did they, uh, you know... Did they learn from it, I guess is my question. Yeah. Uh, so does that make sense? Yeah, that's me perfectly. I had, uh, in 2009, when I was 19 years old, I had, I don't I don't want to go too into detail on it, but I, sure. I committed a felony offense in the eyes of my the state of Oregon. Um, it wasn't a victim, it wasn't a violent offense. I wasn't really aggressing on anyone. It was a property crime. And uh uh, I still have the felony on my record to this day, but it's never hindered me from getting a job. It's never hindered me from any any associations that I've had because I always try to put myself out there according to my moral character and according to my personal integrity and my personal ethics. Um, so I guess I just always, I did learn from it. I think that's really important what you said is that the fact that, because I know a lot of people who have had troubles with, they've, they've, had criminal charges on them. They have criminal backgrounds. Some of them have learned from it and become really, really awesome and cool people and just trustworthy and like the kind of people you would just want around you and in your life and around your stuff and you wouldn't think twice. There are the people who don't learn from it. They learn how to not get caught next time, but um, yeah, well, yeah they've learned that's, from it. Then. Yeah, that's <laughs> something that I, that's something that I've always regretted, but it's something that has ma helped make me who I am today. Gave me a first-hand experience of the criminal system, the judicial system, which getting a first-hand insight in there and you realize how truly just messed up and ineffective and and just ridiculous it is. But that's one thing that because that reputation has, I, I always carry that with me and I know that, you know, once upon a time I infringed upon someone else's property and being who I am now is not okay, that's, you know, I, that's not okay at all and I don't. You know, I, I feel ashamed about the fact that I did it and about th that I was that person that I was. But, I mean, I just try to rectify it with being the person that I am today. And it just has really helped me shape myself into the person that I want to be. And knowing that that's not what you want to be. And you don't want to aggress on anybody, whether it be through violence or crime or politics. It's all yeah. the same. It's all aggressing on another individual. Um, it's so really yeah, humble of you, Thomas. You know, what? it's it's really humble of you to admit that you're wrongdoing, and you know you know what you did wrong. That's that's a great yeah. thing. I know what uh, I did wrong. I know that it was wrong and immoral, and it's not conducive yeah. to who I want to be today. So I just always carry that with me, and just it's the it's just the aspect of learning from your mistakes, carrying them with you, but not letting them weigh you down. Learning from them. Yeah. Uh. I I was thinking um, if you actually did start that business, what's the business idea that you have? You know, like uh, can I be an employee? <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> I don't have a business plan now. Actually, no. I've had numerous <laughs> ideas in the past, but they usually come and go on a whim. So I yeah. just want to be a business owner. Just the aspect of being a business owner, contributing something to the market that people want to pay for, and being a job creator if not just for two or three people, making right. a difference in those two or three people's lives. But it's not going to be just two or three people then, because if you own a business, then you're going to be selling stuff. So yeah. you're going to affect multiple people. And, you know, you're going to be making a profit because you did the right thing. You know, that I guess that's one thing that most people don't get. Like, when you are being greedy, at the same time, you have to, you know, be... Uh, good to others at the same time. That's how businesses actually work as opposed to government. Uh, I think that's a big 
thing to understand. And but yeah, good stuff. Uh, good for you. Uh, you know, and you know, honestly, I I tried to start a business. It didn't work, but uh, it, it was fun. You know, and you know, I'm gonna try again. Believe me, I will yeah. someday. You keep trying, man. Yeah, someday. Um, yeah, that's just a lot of things, and a lot of people. That's like the. Uh, I feel like that's why a lot of communist anarchists and people who are just totally anti-market and anti-business, and they're anti what they think is capitalism. Um, because they don't differentiate. They lump everybody in together. If you're a business owner, you're a capitalist, you're a pig who exploits people because you're greedy. And it's like, no, there is being a compassionate, there's compassionate capitalism. There are people who start businesses because they want to make a difference in the people who work for them's lives. They want to do something good for their community and society, but it's all about helping those people, and they make a lot of money in, on the side doing so because they, yeah, because you said, because they did the right thing. They're putting out a product that people want to buy. But, yeah, yeah I've, I've, I've worked for people before that put their employees above everything else. Right. And it just, it's not all, there. it's not all black and white. There's a lot, there's not, it's not all just, you're a greedy capitalist pig, you're a billionaire, you live in your ivory tower, and you don't, and you, <laughs> and you, uh, use like human beings as like your toilet or whatever. Like no, there's a lot of there's B corporations, there's compassionate corporations. There's just so yeah. For me, I don't know. I, see, my my thing is with the corporations. Um, I I feel like uh, most corporations, you know, they turn into that CEO on the you know high pedestal type thing you were talking about. But you know, proprietary. Companies, you know, and partnerships, uh, they aren't corporations, and actually all they want to do is just be a mom and pop store, a lot like a little pizza shop down the street, yeah. you know, and they're just trying to make a buck, and but they're making pizzas for, because people want pizza, you know, that that's what it is. I mean, they have to do it that way, you know, as, and corporations a lot of times, you know, like Monsanto. You know, those guys can go to the government, but, but yes, those are, are the there government. are, I'm uh, sorry? Monsanto is the government. They don't have to right. go to the government. They are the government. <laughs> right, but, yeah, the, there are those uh, small corporations that actually do the right thing. They just yeah. are limited in liability. Yeah, I should have said corporation when I meant business. I just meant, I just meant a capitalist. Um, yeah. Just people pooling their risk and their capital together. A cap. What would you call? It? What would be the technical term? Like a capitalist. Um, that, that not, is an capitalism. not an entity. Just a. Just a. Yeah. Just a Our business. Business. A corporation yeah, is just a business with, with legal personhood. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. We're almost at the end here. We got another five minutes. I'd say. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Uh, what else we got? What else can we oh, talk about here? Yeah. Go ahead. You didn't. Hey, did you see that? Um, you know, are you familiar with the guy? His name's. I don't know his his full name. His name's Derek J. He's in the libertarian movement. He's he's part of Free State Project. There was that thing I shared the other day. You should really watch it. It's an hour and a half documentary that he made. It's called Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. He made it in 2012. It's basically just him getting arrested for an hour and a half for no reason for 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 filming cops and courthouses and fil and bringing signs to like uh, political like uh, campaign stops and trying to film these politicians and ask them questions, filming courthouse employees in the park. It's him getting arrested and like tackled and beat up by the police for an hour and a half for no reason for for. For breaking vict for committing victimless crimes, that's why it's his victimless crime spree. Like just poli just violating policies, he ended up spending like over a hundred a hundred and something days in jail, and had he actually they imposed a two thousand dollar fine on him for one thing, and he and he and he did it in jail time instead because he said I'm not going to voluntarily fund uh, uh, an institution that wages war on peaceful people. <laughs> uh, and then there was even a story in there. He talked about these two people that who got arrested for refusing to stand up when the judge came in. 
So I thought that was something funny. You should really check that out, though, because that's it, it's just a it's it's a truly amazing. Jake, our friend Jake, watched it, and he was like, "Dude, I love this!" Like, so many emotions went through me as I was watching this, because right. he really is just getting bullied by police, and he's like the nicest guy, and he's just you know being friendly, and like they're just like, "Sorry, you can't film in here. You're going to jail." And it's like, I don't know. Wow. It's, just, it's just craziness, and it just. Reinstills the idea of like, like status should watch that and go. This is really what you want. Like you want people arrested for having video cameras. You want people. At one point he gets ran off the road. He's on his bike and a cop runs him off the road on his bike and tackles him to the ground and puts his knee in his neck and stuff because he, because he he's constantly like filming them. Because it's a small town. It's a key in New Hampshire. It's like where right, the right. Free State Project is founded, which is even funnier because it's a free state project. They're supposedly the most free yeah. state in the nation, and it looks like just any other small town in any other state with the same bully cops with their badges and guns. But you really should check yeah. that out. Hopefully anybody watching this has seen it. If you haven't, it's Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree on YouTube. It's, a good, it's, it's, really, it's really inspirational to me to just see this guy like just – putting himself 100% on the line for what, just to stand up for what he believes in. Like, he's willing to be arrested, like, numerous, numerous times. And uh, and then there was that the other guy, Rich Paul. Do you know who that is? Yes. Yeah, he did, and he's from the Free Start as well, you right? You heard about his, his court thing? A his, little bit. His trial, he got 81 years in prison for selling marijuana. 81 years because he refused to take their plea bargain and go to trial because he didn't think he should just surrender himself to an imaginary entity who is bringing charges on him for selling a plant to people. So standing up for what he believes in, dude gets 81 years. It's like, fuck, man, that's just... It's yeah. sad, but it's also inspirational to just see these people that are just, this is their life, and they don't care what they have to do to get this point across to people. They're, thro they're putting their own heads on the chopping block to, to just spread the information and the idea of anarchy to these people. And, I mean, all I can say to people like that is I hope, I hope in, like, Kokesh, when he was in jail for, like, four months, and he might go back to jail because of his drug charges... Like, I just hope they're in jail talking to people, spreading this idea, so that when more people come out of the jail, more anarchists are coming out into the world. More people that are coming out into the world that are going to go Google voluntarism and, you know, yeah. maybe it will help yeah. change their lives, but... Yeah. Well, I, I unfortunately have to cut you short, Thomas, but um, information is the currency of anarchy. Um, so, Thomas, thank you very much. Uh, actually, you're an inspiration yourself, believe it or not. Thank you, um, sir. Yeah, so uh, take care, everyone. <laughs>